I've been playing Valorant for a little under a year now. I started somewhere between Geckos and Deadlocks releases, and I've been playing pretty consistently since then, so I think I'm qualified to tell you that I suck at this game. Like, complete dog shit. Look at this. But if there's anything I love more than being kinda subpar at everything I do, it's reading into the lore of a multiplayer video game. And Valorant is no exception. Everything's got a story, the world, the agents, the maps, the whole shebang. But that's not what you came here for. Every agent has their own set of abilities, ranging from a cute little robot to sky lasers of mass destruction. So the question I'm asking today is, who is the most powerful agent in Valorant lore-wise? I am not the guy to be taking any opinions from when it comes to gameplay, go watch a tier list video or something, I don't know. I'll be ranking every agent so far from the weakest to strongest by how objectively powerful they are, and not who beats who in a one-on-one -on -one, since everyone has a certain amount of knowledge on any given agent, specific counters, and so on. Although I keep who beats who in mind, the mindset is more along the lines of how will these characters fare against a third party whether it's a single powerful opponent or a team of enemies. Without further ado, we can start at the bottom spot. I know exactly where you are. Which goes to Cypher. In the world of Valorant, there's a substance called Radianite, and enough exposure can physically change someone, meaning that there's gonna be a disparity between normal people with their gadgets and Radiants with literal superpowers. That being said, Cypher isn't a Radiant. Rather, he's more of an information broker finding out anything there is to know about any given person. The gadgets he keeps on him only reinforce this idea, like the camera and tripwire. But some voice lines imply that he's quite the dangerous guy. You're lucky I'm generous, or else your families would be next. Cinematics show off his skill in combat, so he's not weak by any means, undeniably a useful asset to the Valorant team, but not particularly powerful on his own. You should run! Next is Killjoy, here for very similar reasons to Cypher. She herself is not a Radiant, so no crazy powers, but she is intelligent, becoming a lead in the Kingdom Corporation's research and development division at only 18 years old. She's the brains of the team, even creating a portal to another universe with the help of some other agents. In combat, she uses a turret which is powered by Radianite, nano swarm grenades which she could set off whenever she chooses, an alarm bot, and a lockdown that stuns enemies caught in its huge radius after a few seconds. And we saw that if given the time, she can make robots that can take the other agents head on. Like Cypher, she offers a lot to the team as a whole, bringing her intellect to the table and making her crazy inventions. But Kildred doesn't strike me as particularly dangerous. Cypher definitely has the edge in physical prowess, but KJ is still highly trained, so Cypher's better fighting and gun skills likely wouldn't be enough to mitigate the difference in tech. Cypher, your homemade gadgets are so cute! Reminds me of some of my work in kindergarten. Fire in the hole! I debated putting Ray's lower on the list due to her more rudimentary gadgets compared to the first two entries, but since this is a list based on who's the most powerful in a battle setting, Ray's kit brings a lot more destructive capabilities to the table. Her paint canisters act as scatter grenades which she carries dozens of at any given time, her blast packs send her zooming around the air, her bomb buddy rolls up on anyone it detects and explodes, and of course her RPG that does exactly what you'd expect. All of that being said, she's much better equipped for fights than KJ and Cypher. She tends to take things less seriously than the other agents, but her explosive personality matches her kit, so it only gives her an edge. Oh yeah! Monster on the loose! Gecko's the first Radiant, kinda, on the list. He's pretty inexperienced when it comes to formal training and whatnot, especially when compared to the other agents. What sets him slightly above the others so far are his creatures. He has four, each with unique abilities. Dizzy shoots goop that blinds enemies, Wee Man shoots a concussive burst, Mosh Pit duplicates itself across the area it lands on then explodes, and Thrash can attack and stun all enemies it lands near. Although they can only be used one at a time in game, it's fair to assume that they can all function independently from one another in universe. And if any are damaged, Gecko can always pick them up and send them back out after a few seconds. Welcome to my world! Viper's a second agent to join the Valorant Protocol, and second in command. She, like many others on the lower end of the list, is just a regular human without any radiant abilities. She's a chemist who uses her knowledge to create these poison gases that she brings to the battlefield. Her toxic screen covers a large area, her poison orb acts as a poison grenade, and her snake bite covers an area with chemicals that damages anyone who steps on it. Her ultimate allows her to cover an entire area with smoke, dealing damage to anyone inside and limiting their vision. Her smokes would likely be the most important part of her kit since they damage anyone who breathes it in. And the vulnerability the snake bites grant is probably just an in-game and not an in-universe debuff. Pull them to their grave! 
Deadlock's the last surviving member of a team of Norwegian Valkyrie chicks. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. Her sound sensor and barrier aren't anything noteworthy, at least for the purpose of this video, but the nanowire she uses in her gravnet and ultimate are much more impressive. Her gravnet was able to momentarily apprehend a radivore bear, similar to Gecko's creatures, but a bear, and later squeeze a teleporter hard enough to begin to break it. Her ultimate, or annihilation as it's called, sends these nanowires at a target and reels them in, killing them instantly. Deadlock being a skilled fighter along with her strong tech puts her above those previously mentioned. Prepare for Hellfire! Brimstone is the leader of the Valorant Protocol and your run-of-the-mill army vet. Definitely one of the most skilled agents. He has incendiary runs to roast enemies and a goddamn orbital strike that decimates anyone caught in it. His experience and Sky Laser of Doom give Brim some points. But, uh... He's really f***ing old. Almost everyone comments on it, even Brim himself. Who lets that old man out of the nursing home? He also got captured and needed to be saved by Chamber, and his reaction time and overall physical feats just aren't on par with those later on the list. You. Are. Powerless. Kao was a tricky one to place, especially in relation to the other agents due to his ability to nullify Radiance. Kao comes from an alternate distant future where humans are at war with Radiance. His whole purpose is to remove their abilities and make them easier to kill. And he did just that, killing multiple Radiants including some agents from the main game. An enemy Astra. Powerful, but killable. But although he's a direct counter to many of the stronger characters in the verse, his knife and ultimate would do nothing against anyone who isn't a Radiant, leaving him with a flashbang and a grenade. But he's still pretty relative to the other agents as we saw in the warm-up cinematic. He did kill Reyna and who knows how many other Radiants, but again, only after they were stripped of their powers. NOWHERE TO RUN! Sova's like the Hawkeye of Valorant. While everyone's running around with these big guns and their superpowers, he carries around a bow and arrow. But he is extremely accurate, able to casually bounce his arrows off walls and hit his target. His recon arrows and drones show the location of enemies, and his shock arrows do massive damage to anyone caught in his radius. His ultimate allows him to shoot three energy blasts that penetrate walls and reveal enemies hit by it. These blasts, along with his crazy accuracy, give him a slight edge over KO. OFF YOUR FEET! Breach is a regular human who uses Radiantite tech in his robo-arms. His arms can send out flashes, stun enemies, and shoot fusion charges that deal heavy damage to those caught in it. His ultimate allows him to cause an earthquake that sends enemies back and stuns them. Neither this nor the Aftershock, which is just a smaller version, do damage in-game, but it's an earthquake on demand, so I can only imagine it hurts to say the absolute least. He might not be as skilled as some of the others I've mentioned, but his arms offer too much versatility to be any lower. You will not kill my allies! Sage can manipulate ice looking orbs into different constructs. She typically uses them as walls, pillars, or shoots them at the floor to slow people down. But most notably, she can heal herself and others. She can also revive other people. Reviving allies is obviously very useful, but wouldn't come in handy in certain scenarios like a 1v1 since she can't revive herself. But healing any and all wounds gives her an edge on anyone who happens to damage her. She's even able to regrow lost limbs. She's also a very competent fighter, as we saw while she trained in the Revelation cinematic. She's a healer in the main continuity, but Kao confirms her power can also be extremely dangerous. It is strange, Sage. Where I'm from, you're no medic, only a weapon. You had your fun! My turn! I'll keep this brief since Clove just dropped as I was making this video, so I just couldn't leave them out entirely. They can smoke off areas on the battlefield, severely damage enemies with immortality essence, and heal themselves after killing someone. But most notably, they're immortal. Like, straight up can't die, it seems. Even able to continue using smokes while in the astral plane. I've never been one to believe immortality is an all-powerful ability on its own since it doesn't usually scale to one's durability. They can still be knocked out and incapacitated. And they're also new to the whole shooting people thing, similar to Gecko. The ability to come back over and over again is obviously still useful and could beat some people in a battle of attrition, but others with much higher skill or more power can continuously put them down. You want to play? Let's play! Chamber uses nanotech on his body to conjure up guns he made himself. The Headhunter, a heavy pistol, and the Tour de Force, a sniper that can insta-kill enemies and leaves a slowing field around their body. And of course, his ability to teleport to his, uh, teleporter, as long as he's in its range. Although I'm not sure if this is lore accurate or if the teleporter's range is a gameplay-only kind of thing. 
What really makes him dangerous is his insane accuracy. He and his Omega Double were able to shoot at each other so accurately that their bullets penetrated each other causing the destruction of the map fracture. And killing a bunch of scientists, but hey, I'm sure he had his reasons. He's definitely not on par with some of the others on this list in terms of destructive capabilities, but his attack potency and ability to simply head tap all of his enemies shouldn't be overlooked. His Omega Double, who should be an exact copy of Chamber physically, was able to defeat Brimstone and Viper and even capture Brimstone, so that should at least scale him above the two of them together. Joke's over! You're dead! Phoenix is able to create flames at will generated from his own body. Although the game may lead you to believe otherwise, these flames cause huge explosions and heavy damage. Before joining, he accidentally burned down his art school, but we don't know if it was a small fire that ended up growing or a large building destroying feet. Regardless, he's able to manipulate and control it even after he projects it. Typically, he creates walls to cut people off or block line of sight, and any of his own fire heals him. Additionally, he can curve an orb of fire that blinds his enemies. And of course, he has the ability to revive himself, possibly making him essentially immortal. This is probably a good time to mention, like 11 minutes in, that ultimates seem to be something every agent can do on command, rather than charge it up over time like they do in-game. His I got this nature can get him into trouble sometimes, but he's typically skilled and strong enough to handle himself. I suggest you move! Harbor's the last non-radiant on the list, but he does have a powerful bracelet and a set of rings that allow him to create water and control it in any way he chooses usually creating large walls or even shields that can block bullets. And he's able to detect and stun enemies caught in his water. His fights with Realm left whole towns flooded. It's not an ability in-game, but it's confirmed that he's capable of changing the temperature of his water, whether it be freezing cold or boiling hot. Like most of the agents on this list, the limits of his powers haven't been explored, so we don't know just how much water he's able to make and whether it's at building, town, or city-destroying levels. Who's next? I originally had Yoru in the top 3 due to his ability to tear through dimensions and possibly even time travel, but he doesn't compare to the next agents with better feats of power or straight up insta-kill abilities. Regardless, his ability to walk between dimensions and become invisible ties well with his combat ability and his fast reaction time, being able to casually react to gunfire at near point-blank range. He can leave rifts which he can teleport to at any time, or blind people with dimensional fragments. And he can see between dimensions while wearing his mask. He seems to be able to bring items into this dimension, like the aforementioned mask, guns, and even a, a comb. But I'm not sure if he can bring people with him, unlike a certain someone I'll be getting to. Get out of my way! Jet being so high might be a bit surprising. She controls the wind, creates small clouds, or uses it to propel herself in any direction she chooses at high speeds. 90 miles an hour if Brimstone's voice line is anything to go off of. Jet, remember to stretch. I don't want you to sprain an ankle at 90 miles an hour. It's possible she scales two Neon in speed since they have a sort of rivalry going on, but I doubt she's as fast. We could compare Jet's own movement speed to the speed at which she throws her knives. If we quickly compare a Vandal to the real life AK-47, but likely even faster because of the Valorant Protocol's high-tech weapons, which Jet's knives directly scale to in speed. But her most impressive feat, and the reason I place her so high, is her ability to create storms. From what I could find, Jet is from Seoul in South Korea. Fade talks about how the locals mention a freak storm that left the restaurant all but destroyed. I find it unlikely that the restaurant was the only building affected by the storm, rather it was where Jet was when she caused it, leaving the building at the storm's epicenter. Assumptions do have to be made, but spontaneously creating a storm that destroys buildings should at least put this at town level. Watch them run. Omi used to be an assassin before a freak accident turned him into the phantom he is now. He can make cover or block line of sight and send shadows even through walls to blind people. This, along with his ability to quickly teleport anywhere, leaves his opponents paranoid. Valorant gave us probably the best on-screen fighting performance of any agent so far, as he mows through a tower full of guards. Having Omen below like the top 5 is probably pretty contentious since Omen's just <laughs> so cool, but his abilities probably aren't enough to give him an edge on anyone at his skill level or above his level of power but they keep his character pretty mysterious, so it's very possible that he's one of the strongest agents, but going off of what we have right now, I can't place him any higher. It's you and me! Iso, like Omen, was a tricky one to place, since he doesn't have the destructive power of some of the others this high, but he is very powerful from what we do know. He uses Radiantite energy and gives it a physical form, typically using it as bulletproof shields, whether it be a large wall to take cover behind, or a personal one that covers his body as he moves. His undercut ability sends this materialized Radiantite to literally break down the body of his opponent, making them easier to kill. He can bring himself and others into his own pocket dimension, a stabilized reality inside the Interverse, as Sage calls it. 
He uses this arena as a place to carry out his contracts without distractions. He was so skilled, he became infamous and thought to be a myth among criminals, becoming the best assassins the science of the Hourglass had since Omen. Speaking of which, Iso was tasked with killing Omen. The fight never happened since Iso didn't go through with it, so I guess we'll never know how that would have turned out if it would have been a fight at all. I've got your trail! Okay, let me preface Sky's placement being so high by saying that assumptions do have to be made regarding her power and ability to animate her wooden figures into living creatures. We do know that Sky is capable of creating stronger beings, like how she said she created a dragon once, but it didn't go well, or how Omen senses that there's a terrible beast inside of her. Oh, there is a terrible beast inside you, Sky. Unleash it. We can also assume that Sky did tap into her potential in Ko's alternate future via his voice lines. I've seen what the enemy Sky becomes. Deal with her now. Trust me. With the ability to create any creature she chooses, whether real or fictional, and give them abilities of her own choosing, she would undoubtedly be one of the strongest agents. But as of right now, she only has a hawk that blinds people, a Tasmanian tiger that can attack and concuss people, and seekers that finds the nearest enemies and blinds them. On top of that, she's a skilled and vicious fighter being able to solo a whole team of realm soldiers. But taking her as she is now, just completely face value, I'd probably place her between Clove and Chamber. But there's too many voice lines implying that Sky is capable of much more, it's all but confirmed. Hi! I'm pissed! Neon is Valorant's speedster, and I've already expressed my thoughts on why speed is one of the most important factors in these kinds of topics. She uses the bioelectricity in her body to run fast and shoot electricity. Exactly how fast isn't explored, but she can quickly move out of the way of gunfire, so it's fair to assume supersonic speeds. More impressive is her electricity. She can use it as a concussive blast or fire it directly. Neon claims that her body is able to power a large city block, one with hotels and restaurants and whatnot, even while wearing a cap that limits her power. A large city block in New York can run on roughly 2,500 to 5,000 kilowatts a year. Uh, hey, caught this while editing? That's only per meter squared, not the entire block like annually. Neon doesn't mention how long she can power the block or whatever, so take that statement as you will. Taking 3,000 as a nice lowball means Neon's body is able to produce nearly 11 billion joules while nerfed. For reference, a lightning bolt produces about 1 billion. She also says that without the limiter, she could accidentally destroy half of the headquarters, which is roughly the size of an island as we saw in the warm-up cinematic. Accidentally. A full blast could easily put her in the island-busting range. Her limiter isn't to protect herself, it's for everyone else. FACE YOUR FEAR! Fade wasn't a character I initially expected to be too high on the list, but her Nightfall and Nightmare abilities are crazy overpowered in a battle setting. Her haunt can see and mark all enemies around, her seize ability grabs hold of all enemies in its radius and eats their fears, and her prowlers attack and blind anyone they find. Her Nightfall completely blinds and deafens anyone it touches, giving them vivid nightmarish hallucinations and rendering them immobile. She can also just straight up kill, or at least incapacitate people. I don't know, I don't think these guys are having a fun time. She was able to solo a team of agents which included Neon, Cypher, Breach, Chamber, and Sova. No fighting, no nothing, just <laughs> insta win. They were completely blinded and attacked by multiple prowlers. Fade would have most definitely won had it not been for Ko's ability to nullify her radiant powers. I don't think this automatically scales her to something like Neon's island busting abilities, but it's important to note that none of these powerful agents stood a chance against Fade's nightmares. The hunt begins! Reyna's position is less surprising. She's able to steal the souls of the living and the dead to heal herself or become intangible on command, as well as using leers, which are purple eyeballs that blind every enemy that sees it. While in her empress form, she becomes even more powerful. But to what extent, we don't know, since all we have are her in-game buffs, which include increased attack speed and reload speed. But once again, in Ko's alternate future, Reyna was the leader of the Radiance rebelling against the non-Radiance. I don't believe it automatically makes her the strongest Radiant in the verse, but it's still a testament to how powerful she is. Like Fade, she has insta-kill abilities, but her higher skill puts her a step above. You are divided! Astra is easily the most powerful agent in Valorant. I won't even get into her abilities, like creating nebulas or concussing enemies with Nova Pulses. Astra is an astral guardian, which is a cosmic race of people who protect space and time. Astra seems to have some kind of control over cosmic bodies like stars, space dust, and even some control over gravity itself. Her ultimate, the Cosmic Divide, is described as an infinite divide. Although I don't believe it stretches across the entire universe, stretching across the entire world isn't too far-fetched. Kale mentions that she destroyed entire worlds in his universe. Their Astra doesn't protect reality. She destroys worlds. I would know. 
It could be an exaggeration, but considering the Cosmic Guardians' role as Guardians of the Universe, it's entirely possible that they have the means to destroy celestial bodies too. I'm certain that the only reason they were able to kill her is because of Kao's ability to turn off her powers, making Astra by far the most destructive agent. Although she's not on that level just yet, and she isn't nearly as skilled of a combatant as some of the others on this list, the power gap is just too much. But that's the ranking. It's not a comprehensive list of absolutely everything each agent can do, there's still a lot of lore to be told and not every agent has a ton of feats, so if I miss something or you disagree with anything, leave it down in the comments. But just know that my opinions are objectively correct and I'm never wrong. Thank you to Play Cattle for making today's thumbnail, and also thank you to CB for making these little guys. And you guys can use them too if you become a member. Both of their Twitters are down in the description as per usual, and I'll see you guys later.